Hi, how y'all doing? Um, welcome to another episode of my Hip Hop Review. Um, before I start, I have a few announcements to make. I actually made a new um, Instagram account. Basically, um, you will get like updates on the, not only this channel, but with music, um, music discussions, all of that stuff and stuff like that. Just promoting my own brand. I'm going to put a link on the um, description box. Make sure y'all can shoot a follow. If y'all don't, have a nice day. Other than, other than that, um, the album I'm about to review today, I actually done a review about a couple of days ago, but my camera fucked up on me, so basically now I have to redo the album review. I was just trying to do the album review a couple minutes ago, but like again, the camera fucked up. I know I need a new camera, that's no excuse, but the album I'm about to do a review on is Jay-Z's The Dynasty, released in Halloween of 2000. In the year two, um, on Rockefeller and the Def Jam. I've done a review on In My Lifetime Volume 1, Volume 2 Hard Knock Life, The Streets is Watching Soundtrack, which is a very underrated soundtrack, and I kind of feel that that album is like the precursor to this album. Volume 3, The Life and Times of Sean Carter, which is an album I gave a mixed review on. Um, the Blueprint, Volume 2, The Gift and the Curse, and The Black Album. Um, and after I review um, his unplugged album with the roots, I'm gonna go back to the reasonable doubt. Basically, um, I don't know exactly when. I hope it will be maybe like the early June, cause Loki. I'm think I'm debating if I want to do it on the anniversary of his album date release date, or I might just probably just do it early June. Maybe do like an early anniversary review or some shit like that. The reason why I didn't want to touch that album because everyone done a review on that album and you guys know me, I don't really want to re review like notable classics like when I first started out and stuff like that so I'm definitely going to re review that album and shit like that so and plus my homeboy Kooji wants to jump on the review too and so yeah stay tuned on that but back to this album okay so by the time after he released the volume 3 album she was trying to fight this whole criminal case, and um, he he um, got not guilty, and he was on probation and stuff like that. And so by that time, like I mentioned before on that review, there were like a lot more um, Rockefeller artists basically on that. You know, with Memphis Bleak and B. Siegel and shit like that. And so basically, what had happened was they. Jay-Z had a plan of doing like a compilation album of um, promoting the brand and stuff like that. Like all the artists on the genre, on the label and shit like that. And Def Jam said they felt like it would not be as marketable and stuff like that. And to me, I have to say, it could have it could have actually worked though, to be real with you. Because, yeah, Jay-Z was a star, a, bit, a huge rapper at that time and shit like that, but Think about it, like, DMX was was big and stuff like that. Rough Riders Volume 1 came out. That was number one on the Billboard 200, like, and that elevated, like, a lot of people's status on that label. And plus, Def Jam, didn't Def Jam own Rough Riders and shit like that? Yeah, so, and plus, like, Puff Daddy and the Family with No Way Out, that was another huge album and shit like that, so it could have worked. If it was marketed right, this if just just a thought though, you know. And around that time, there were um this new rapper was signed to the label by the name of Freeway, dope MC by the way, and he this is like his first appearance on Wax. And one thing I've never noticed about Rockefeller, there were like a lot of rappers in Philadelphia signed to the label like Ochino, Sp Young Chris, B Siegel. Like, it's crazy because Puff Daddy actually wanted to sign Freeway to Bad Boy from when I looked up. And I'm like, thank God he didn't sign because if you guys know the track record with Diddy, you would definitely know why. He, it's a good I think he didn't sign to Bad Boy. So, now the production of this album include, now, as I mentioned before, like, he got like a new team 
here, like, of course, him, Dame Dash, and Biggs were the executive producer. Kayembo Hip Hop Joshua was the associate producer. Be High, Bink, Just Blaze, two of like the newest members to Rockefeller. Um, Just Blaze, you guys should know who he is. Um, this was like his big break on his album. Um, yeah, he also produced for like cats like Aaliyah, Boot Camp Clip. But like, yeah, people people weren't really knowing him back in those those times. Um, Memphis Bleak, yes, he makes beats too. Um, the Neptunes, who um, they had like a breakthrough, we know, with the Nori song Super Thug, off like his um self titled album, which is a very dope album by the way. Um, but like I said before, this star power elevated with this album. Um, Rick Rock, Rock Wilder. Um, TT and um, Kanye West. Yeah, you guys should know who Kanye West is. Um, he's on your social media at least every hour and stuff like that. So, yeah. <coughs> Three singles include I Just Wanna Love You, Give It To Me, Change The Game, and Guilty Until Proven Innocent. And the guest appearances include Beanie Siegel, Memphis Bleak, Snoop, um, the Dynasty, which is basically like all the members of Rockefeller together, basically. Um, R. Kelly, Freeway, and Scarface. Alright, 16 songs. Let's see if I can make this video without camera fucking up. Track number one is the intro of the song. That's a pretty cool intro right there. Nice way to start off the album. Um, what I got from that is like a look at the mind state of a person who has reason to the top. But he never forgets where he started from, and like, the reason why he doesn't forget, because there's like a lot of pain from where he started from and shit. Um, that's a very cool song. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Mm. According to like Just Blaze, while he was producing this track, she didn't really get to hear the final mix before it went to mastering. And so, there were like just two separate loops, if you listen to it, they were playing at the same time. And the engineer didn't know that and stuff like that. So the singing was not supposed to be every four bars, but at the same time, looking looking at it now, I, it kind of was like a blessing in disguise because it made it kind of like set the whole tone of the album and shit like that, you know, which I'll get into in a minute. Track number two, we got "Change the Game." Um, that song features Beanie Siegel and Memphis Bleak. Um, that's a pretty bouncy, nice little club banger and shit like that. Um, definitely, definitely like one one of the best songs off his album and stuff like that, in my opinion. Like one of those up tempo songs, you know. And it's crazy because Rick Rock produced that song, and it's it's funny how. He still gave Jay Z like a West Coast feel because if you hear the beat, it sounds like something you would definitely hear from like that Snoop Dogg presents the East Siders album and stuff like that. I definitely need to get my hands on that album too. Um, a little story on that song. Um, this was of course the first week he started working on the album, Jay Z, and he didn't really have a hook on the album, a hook on the song until before the album was done. And stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Track number three, I Just Want to Love You, Give It To Me. Um, that song features Pharrell. I can't stand that song. I'm sorry. I really cannot stand that song. It's, I mean, I got what he was trying to do with the song. Like I know it's like a song you know, for the ladies and shit. But I've heard that song so many times that... It's just like, uh, I don't want it, uh, and like Pharrell with that, I just want to come. When he gets from that fake ass soul voice, I'm just like, dude, no, no. Like if I if I'm at a club, if I'm at a club and this song comes on and stuff like that, I'm I might jump to it. I might, you know, I might jump to it and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like it's one of his most overrated songs. And from my looks up. This, this song was based on a true story that happened at a party Mary J. Blige had and stuff like that, so, yeah. Track number four is Streets Is Talking, featuring um, Beanie Siegel. 
that was actually originally supposed to be a Jay-Z solo track. But Beanie was asked to lay down the verse and they like what he heard and stuff like that, you know. Um, that's a pretty cool song. This is actually one of the first times that Just Blaze produced for um Jay-Z. And he made this beat actually using Pro Tools and stuff like that. Which I thought I thought that was pretty interesting and stuff, you know. And it's kind of funny too because from what people don't really know is that like from what I looked up, Bing he actually accused Just Blaze of kind of stealing his production sound and things of that nature. Which I'm again to talk about the production after I review this album because like they both are known for that soulful, that soulful you know sound and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty interesting, but. Loki, I feel like Just Blaze kind of made that into his own in a way, but people don't, don't, people, you know, people rarely give Blaze credit for that, but give me one second. Sorry about that, but I had to clear my throat. Um, yeah. So track number five, This Can't Be Life. Um, that song features Beanie Siegel and Scarface. Um, shout out to Scarface, definitely one of my favorite MCs of all time. This was definitely the perfect song he was in because, you know, both Jay and Scarface collaborated on I forgot the name of the song. It was on the last of Dying Breed album. Slept on the album, by the way. And it's just a song where it's just like painting out like it's just basically them like wondering like how they're gonna live through this pain and stuff like that. Take it one day at a time. Yeah. Um. Definitely Scarface stole the show. This is definitely one of my favorite Scarface verses of all time. Um, yeah, very good song right here. It uses the sample, the Harold Melvin and the Blue Note sample. Yeah, it uses the Harold Melvin and the Blue Note sample and stuff like that. So, yeah, very good song. Um, track number six, Get Your Mind Right, Mommy. Um, that features, um, Memphis Bleak and Snoop Dogg. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that song, that's another song that, it's a cool song, but it felt more like a Snoop Dogg song. Definitely something you would, that would fit perfectly with, on the Last Meal album. Um, dope album and shit. Um, cause you know that song, who produced that song? Rick Rock produced that song too, so it definitely has like a Snoop Dogg feel, but it's still a pretty cool song. Not, not to take away from it. Track number seven, Stick to the Script. That's Jay and Beanie Siegel. That's a pretty dope song. Um, track number eight, You, Me, Him, and Her. That's Signs of Dynasty. Uh, that's, I could have done without that song. Track number nine, Guilty Until Proven Innocent, featuring R. Kelly. <sighs> yep. Okay. So, this is another ironic song. Basically, Self-explanatory is just R. Kelly and Jay-Z proving their innocence and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's kind of, kind of crazy, though, because a lot of people love the Jay-Z and R. Kelly collaborations, but when they came out with the album, it was just, everyone was saying it was just trash. And it's kind of, it's kind of funny because, like, um... I heard some of that, I didn't hear all of it, but I didn't really like it that much, and stuff like that, so, yeah, but, other than that, I thought like this song was pretty okay, not really one of my favorite songs, cause, yeah, not really one of my favorite songs, but it's still a pretty cool song, basically, um, track number 10, Parking Lot Pimpin', that features Beanie Siegel and Memphis Bleak, um, that's, that pre song is okay, track number 7, 11, Holla, featuring Memphis Bleak, uh, that song was in. Track number 12, 1900 Hustler, um, featuring Beanie Siegel, Memphis Bleak, and um, Freeway. Pretty cool song. I love this song so much. Uh, definitely, Beanie Siegel and Freeway did their thing on this song. 
the song is kind of like a cover of the convict song one nine hundred dollar crook you guys should know who the convicts are they were like a rap group um signed to rap a lot records um yeah it's it's kind of cool because like <coughs> it kind of like offers like tips on how to survive in a drug game and stuff like that so yeah i thought that was a pretty cool song definitely um it's kind of reminds me of 10 crack commandments from big from biggie track number 13 the roc featuring beanie Siegel and memphis bleak um yeah that song was pretty cool Breck. then you have soon you'll understand which was um actually it's a jay-z solo track and stuff like that and basically the song from what i heard read up it was talking about it was verses about a lost love and stuff like that and there are rumors that it was dedicated to this trinidadian model named chanel scott and things of that nature so who knows but yeah it's a pretty cool track you know and yeah it's a pretty cool track check number the next track squeeze first um a, another underrated song that beat though whoo pretty cool beat um right there that beat was produced by um rick rock and basically squeeze first it's kind of it's telling you the first verse is kind of talking about you know how you to use a gun and stuff like that and while the second verse is like talking about the youth how a youth is like basically a drug dealer and like living in a drug game basically so pretty cool song and the last track, Where Have You Been, featuring Beanie Siegel. My favorite song off this whole project. Um, this is a classic song. This is a perfect song with Jay and Beanie at their prime. Um, the song talks basically talks about like absentee fathers and stuff like that. And one thing I love is just how vulnerable they both sounded and how somber that beat is like. Dada, where have you been like it's a very heavy song and it kind of like carries the tradition of jay-z ending off his albums on a downer note and stuff like that but yeah this was just whew. overall to be honest with you when i first heard this album years ago i didn't really like it like that i don't know what i just thought it was just it's just kind of a little bit too poppy, too commercial, maybe. But over the years, I've re-listened to this, and it grew on me. And this is actually definitely one of his most strongest works ever. I would not call it a classic album. A lot of people do call it a classic and things of that nature. Oh, I never really showed y'all the booklet, though. But a lot of people do call it a classic and things of that nature. But I will say it's like a near classic and stuff, you know. Yeah, this is all the picture of the Rocket Family film, you know. And Def Jam was definitely known for this, you know. They were known for all these albums that they said it was going to come out, where at least a good percentage of them never came out. Um, the, the albums that was in stores now, Memphis Beat, The Understand, that came out. DJ Clue, Professional Part 2, that came out. BD Seagull, The Reason, that came out. Um, Rel Medicine, I don't think that came out. Christian Soul Survivors, that never came out. Get Down, Low Down, the movie and soundtrack. I think that did come out, so, yeah. Sorry about that. This is time, all this time I have to redo this whole video. Just fucks fuck me over. But anyway, yeah, it was just like, I'll call it a near classic because there were some iffy songs I could have done without. Um, But yeah, it was definitely a very good album. All the guest appearances, they did their thing on the album. Beanie Siegel, Memphis Bleak, Freeway, um, just the production. And the production, talking about the production, it's very soul. This was like really the beginning of the soulful Jay-Z beats and stuff like that. You know, the classic Rockefeller sound, as I should put it. And it's funny because, you know... The next album, The Blueprint, that took it to the skyrocket of that, you know, in my opinion. But I'm going to hold off on that 
and yeah, must have in your collection, <coughs> yeah, must have in your collection, if you're a Jay-Z fan, you won't regret it, and that's all the time I have, peace.